I think. Uh, pause. I think we're recording. Oh, yep, there's the red light. Ah, all right. Hello, today Skyway Bound presents You Grow Founders. We have Ramon. Uh, it looks like Allison is hiding, but the yes. Alonzos are with us. And today they're working on a concept. Their product is made with the community in mind. You Grow's goal is to produce an affordable platform that allows more people access uh, to fresh, healthy, locally grown, and locally made foods. So I'm your host, Walter Matthews. Let's get going. We got Ramon on the line with us. Yeah, just uh, tell us a little bit about you grow and how you got started. Uh, hi, Walter. Thank you for having me. Uh, you grow started off as a real concern over like various socioeconomic trends that we noticed. We saw technology, economic productivity, and things like automation and even some trade imbalances pushing people into the marginal sides of society, causing food deserts. And we saw this trend getting worse and worse, and there no being no way for normal people to sort of build value for themselves instead of just, you know, through somebody else. So we set to work on it, and over several, several painful months of iteration, we eventually found a set of technologies and a business model that led to Ugro. Um, yeah, and that's really how we started. We started trying to solve a mission, and that's what we're still doing. Nice. Now, when did, when did you really jump into the world of entrepreneurship? I've known you for over just uh, probably a couple years now. And I kind of remember, I remember your team before, before you grow. Uh, yeah, talk to us a little bit about how you get into the world of entrepreneurship and kind of the evolution that's taken place over the. Well, sure, uh, sure. It, it really depends on how you define entrepreneurship. Uh, I started off as a kid fixing Xboxes uh, for my neighborhood friends. Um, less reputably, I would uh, steal bikes and sell them in order to, you know, help my family make ends meet. But then as I got in through my 20s, I got into the habit of building small side businesses that I was doing while I was either traveling or going to school. But most importantly, my last three to four years uh, stretch was surrounded around, the, for the first time, taking these entrepreneurial skill sets and making something useful with it. Uh, so my, my, my journey started really looking at these trends, realizing that the research that I was doing as a profession, I was doing research for USF wasn't going to get me anywhere where I wanted to go. So then I started brainstorming. I had just met this wonderful woman named Allison Cheng. And I told her about this concern I had. And I told, showed her the numbers. And I told her about an idea I had. I said, well, what, what if we find ways, technologies, to give people the tools and the powers to build markets that suit themselves? And uh, you were actually there. You were there during one of our, 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 our first iteration of, uh, <laughs> of, of solutions where we decided to try to take manufacturing and distribute it. And we built a bunch of software. Uh, and in the end, we realized that uh, we weren't going to really make a good product market fit and that it would be too expensive to bring the market. And we made a few fumbles with how we arranged our team. Um, but, you know, we learned, we pivoted. And uh, that's pretty much been the journey. It's been a journey of uh, how do I uh, take a little bit of energy, a little bit of effort that I have encapsulated in my life and make it explode in, in the effectiveness that it can have on other people. Um, well, well, that's very exciting. Yeah. So, so let's go a little bit more in depth. I'm a big proponent of it really takes, you really have to build the right team. Huge fan of team building. I personally come from a military background, 20 plus years in the United States Navy, and it's all about the teams. What were some of the challenges you had or you know, things you've learned about over the years uh, trying to build teams? You've had, to, you've had people come on teams, you've had people come and go uh, to where you're at now. What were some of those challenges? Well, you know, at first my challenges were more internal than external. I realized as I started to build teams uh, that you have to actually have an incredible amount of competence in, in your, not only yourself, but in your ability to communicate with others and, and then the drive and purpose of your mission. You have to inspire people around that. And when I first started, um, I guess I, I just thought, you know, who wants to, to work with some, you know, with some nobody uh, with a big idea, right? You know, I'd, I'd had uh, small businesses. Um, but there was a good deal of insecurity in there. And that led me to my first series of erroneous mistakes, uh, of erroneous decisions, to start to cultivate a, an environment of, of, of more formality than I think, really think was natural for me. Uh, so I created relationships that weren't as authentic. And uh, after we, we had someone leave the team because they didn't really have 
a clear vision of what was expected because I hadn't provided it. I realized that if I'm going to stretch this and if I'm gonna push this as far as I want to push it, I have to just be genuine and I have to con convince people to be behind the mission and the mission only. Um, you know, and my wife even tells me if I, if I lose my mind one day and start getting involved in the business, she's, uh, she's getting in the way of the business, she'll kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> she'll love me and you know, she'll still come home to me, but she'll kick my butt out. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that, that has inspired me to look for, you know, people being driven by the mission, um, to work with us. And it's, and it's helped. We have a team of volunteers and, uh, uh, some, likely co-founders who are looking who are just waiting to formally join but are very nice. excited too so uh, we're, and, very and we've excited been, for you and we've been cultivating a relationship with with this person in particular for a long time and that was another big insight is that thick and thin you have to know how you're going to react when, when you're both stressed when money is tight and you know when the door comes knocking i guess the door doesn't knock you know what i mean <laughs> hey it can knock, knock on the, the door this is for you guys, um, I think it's going to knock. Uh, I, I, there's, I can only see good things coming out of you grow and its community focused mission. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of share more about what's going on with you grow at this particular moment. Sure. So with you grow, we spent the last year developing a functional technology. It uses a new kind of aeroponics, a new way to grow food. Um, that hasn't really been explored right. So we spent a year with the science. Uh, I can get into it, but it would make your listeners go to sleep pretty <laughs> quickly. I think it's fascinating, but my wife tells me not to explain it too much. Um, but now that we've built this technology, we know it works, and we work through the numbers. Where we're at now is bringing, bringing down our costs so that we can sell these units uh, reliably and at the cost point that we want, and building up a large enough community base of early testers to help us explore uh, how to build the foundation. Because there's quite a lot of science, there's quite a lot of programming, there's quite a lot of networking to our business model. And uh, that's pretty much where we're at. We're, we're, really, we're really building the ground floor. And uh, our first customers are, are more than customers, they're our partners, in a sense. Uh, that includes you, actually. Absolutely, I'm ready. I, I already told you, make the first prototype so I can buy it. Yes, <laughs> you're going to grab it. You're going to get it. We're going to make sure to bring you a prototype gold letters of Walter right on it. <laughs> so speaking of uh, customers, uh, how, have you uh, started to line them up or uh, you already have uh, people ready? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in our newsletter that we've been developing, uh, we have many people who are actively wanting to purchase as soon as it's available. And then we have other people that are sort of hopping along to sort of see where we go with it, see what our final product are. Uh, products are. I think these these people have every reason to be skeptical. But as the weeks go on, we notice more and more people uh, jump onto the newsletter and more and more people interact with us more through the newsletter because they see the reality coming to fruition. So I'm really excited to say that this is going to be our most viable pool of customers. And uh, yeah, yeah, man, I, I agree. I, hopefully it comes knocking. Uh, we know for sure we can do our first our first revenue cycle successfully. Nice. That's so. good to hear. I got to tell you, I've, I, I get your newsletters and it, it's very well done. And I love the way that you guys, you make it very, it's very, very personable newsletter. There's going back to what you were talking about, about the authenticity. You definitely can read that in your newsletter. I like the joke at the end. He's got a joke of the week, folks, at the end of the letter. <laughs> uh, typical corny dad joke, but, but I, 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 yeah, smile. going back to the, the whole building a team, my, my biggest lessons, the, the biggest humility that's been brought to me over these last couple of years in learning how to do all of this is just the very thing that makes me think that this is going to work. Uh, the very like basic aspects of my personality are the ones that I need to push forward. Right. And if I hide them under a, a, a you know, a veil of formality, I realize I'm going to lose that spark that I think has been, has been taking this idea and turning it into a reality. So that's just been the biggest lesson. It's, it's at once humility and at once, you know, sort of ego boosting to know that to, to succeed, I just need to be myself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate you saying that because that's me coming through, uh, trying to connect with a community of people. So that means a lot to me. Thank you. I am totally there with you as I, as I travel my personal entrepreneurship journey. Uh, definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm there at a point with you where, I'm, you know, I'm just going to be who I am. I'm a good person. 
and yeah, you know, for other people like me who un, who if they don't completely understand me, they at least understand me enough to where they want to join me on the journey uh, to make to make a difference. So so tell us a little bit more. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this whole like we before the program we were talking about like your dreams for revenue and trying to trying to avoid trying to avoid some of the pitfalls of taking on investors too early. I think a lot of our listeners that might be trying to start, you know, do their own startups. Uh, I think that's one of the things that they fear is, is not having the money and how do they go get investors? But you know, in many cases they just need to get creative like you guys are and find ways to do it as cheap as possible, bootstrap as long as possible before they need that. So tell us a little bit about that process that you guys are going through. Sure, right. So we started all this with me selling my cell phone repair business. Uh, I didn't sell it for millions and millions. I sell it. I was. I became a, a, a many thousandaire. Nice. And uh, and I, I realized that if I'm going to bring this to market, I cannot uh, spend all my money in development and, and hope that somebody helps me bring it to market. I, I cannot run out of money at any point in time. So in, my, in the most paranoid way possible, we built this model and we built our process around complete organic growth from the initial investment to the product development to the sales and revenue all the way back, taking the revenue that we earn and building that back into more you know, sales. That's our assumption from day one. And we built a timeline on that. And what we're going to do in our particular case is we're going to build a limited trial and we're going to take our, our test customers through a whole revenue cycle, maybe even a couple. And we're going to do that. And once we can do that, we can provide a foundation. Then we're going to open the doors to see if uh, people who are interested in investing on us in any dimension uh, uh, are, are willing to talk. And if they are, we at least then have a foundation and, and leverage so we don't lose our shirts in any sort of negotiations we might want. Um, because we definitely want to stick to this long term. And if your vision is to have a long term company, you have to make sure that you stay in charge of it. <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> because though you might, you might be able to build an organization with the culture and spirit and, and policies that would keep your vision going forward eventually, certainly it's not something you can do in a year. You know, you need to build a machine that will keep your vision going forward, even if you, for some reason, can't do it. So my goal is to stay uh, in charge of the culture and in the expansion. So we're going to make sure that we have that foundation before we even talk to an investor. Nice. I really, I really appreciate what you're talking about with regards to culture as well. Yeah. Uh, going back to your comments about staying true to yourself and authenticity I mean, I have seen I have seen startups disintegrate uh, because because culture because of culture or lack thereof of culture, and it's really sad, especially especially when what they had to offer was truly viable. Uh, can you talk to us more about the culture that you're you're you started off with and you're hoping to continue to cultivate? And I know it all starts with authenticity with yourself, but if you can go into a little bit more detail, I think uh, readers would appreciate that. Or listeners. So, so the culture that we're trying to develop is what you're asking about. Yeah. Okay. So in, in essence, the culture we want to have is, is, is one surrounded around fulfillment and enrichment of the customer. There's this phrase that we've been banting about uh, customer enrichment. So uh, we're trying to surround our culture around the kind of people who are givers, right? Uh, there's uh, several books written on this notion of the giver, the taker, and sort of the, the person who switches in between. And depending on the balance you have, uh, studies have shown that you can have varying results in a team organization, team structure. And we want to build an organization of people who are innately givers, who are innately communicative, and who deal with, uh, with uh, conflict or problems or setbacks in a way that keeps customer enrichment in mind, that keeps the health of the organization in mind. And the beautiful thing is that if you build a product which is inherently positively minded, inherently constructive, people who gravitate towards working on that product tend to be those kinds of people anyway, right? Um, so we, we find that if we stay true to that mission, if we make sure that we understand why somebody wants to work with us uh, and, and we see after an extended period of time that they have this genuine desire, for the most part, we are hoping that that's, that's going to be the glue that sticks it together along with, you know, that whole honesty in there. 
and straightforwardness. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, this is an area where I think we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of, a lot of learning, honestly, uh, because it, the dynamics gonna change from just a few few people that we have now, a handful of people, to you know the first fifty or the first hundred. Uh, we're gonna have to at every step make sure that uh, we keep the vision in mind and we develop a culture that promotes that vision. What exactly that's gonna look like? I'm gonna be honest with you, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, the world. Welcome to startup life. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, from every degree of, of of development to software developing, it's mostly let's start this because I have no idea how we're going to end it. Uh, and I guess it's it's good though. It makes every day exciting. You get up Absolutely. in the morning thinking it's an adventure. Well, tell us a little bit about some of those adventures with regards to uh, the actual. We were talking about manufacturing. Oh goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. So the challenges have been these, these last few months and will continue to be the manufacturing process. A lot of the manufacturing industry is obviously one centralized in China and, and two, there are these bottlenecks along all the manufacturing processes where you have very few firms that are controlling the supply and the distribution of where these goods are going. Right. So it has been, and not to get into the weeds of the details, but it has been, something of a, of a Herculean feat, finding a way to take a prototype, which was a year in the making, and it works, and turning that into a commercial product, which oh, is an wow. entirely different product, process. Because now you've got to think about, you know, uh, where you're going to get your supply from, what are the costs of those materials, how do they work well with other materials, will it work just as well 10 years on the road, will that supply dry up, and will that work with the rest of the process of the machine? And this has been new. Uh, and so what we did was, for one of the many important parts, we need plastic formed parts. And the cheapest and easiest for that is injection molding. If you spend ten to $15,000, you can get a mold made and a squirt hot plastic into it and you can get any shape you want. Almost everything around you is, is, has some element of that. A more low tech uh, and difficult process is actually uh, vacuum forming, but it's more achievable. You can, buy, you can make a vacuum former for under $1,000. It's not easy. So that's what we did. We made a vacuum former. Huh. And we also made all the other tools we, we're using to develop this process from the ground up. And we're tuning it for our system specifically. And, uh, and things regularly catch on fire, as we were talking <laughs> about. <laughs> I remember the first day we, we turned on the vacuum former. I had never, I'm not an electronics guy. Like I can wire a circuit. Uh, and this is all high voltage, high power stuff. And I turned it on and I heard it sizzle. And I just kind of closed my eyes and put it behind uh, my, hand, my hands, just thinking, all right, well, let's see how bad it explodes. Uh, but fortunately, it worked. And uh, that, in short, is a good summary for entrepreneurship. <laughs> nice. that is what the manufacturing process has been like every other process, a large, unknown field of, of, of unexpected horror and delight. That's too funny. <laughs> Well, I love it. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs appreciate, you know, because there's a lot of people who are trying to build something like you are, uh, a product. And I think they appreciate knowing that you're going through similar challenges and hearing you talk about the bottlenecks. And I mean, that's, that's important for people to, lead, to, mm -hmm. to hear and understand as they start the journey. Uh, and at the, same at the same time, they hear you saying that you're not giving up, you're not quitting. So, you know, Nice. Kudos to you guys. All right. So, so as we progress, what advice do you have for people that are looking to jump into the world of, of social entrepreneurship? I would say to step back objectively and look at the root cause of whatever, whatever it is you're trying to intervene with. Mm -hmm. uh, um, many times we are driven to a cause because it personally affects us. For example, I am personally... Um, sentimental about homelessness. I spent a lot of time homeless as a child. I was homeless later in adult life. So I see adult uh, homeless people and I think I want to contribute my energy and efforts towards that purpose, right? To do something in that field. But then I look at the total infrastructure, what causes homelessness? What, what are the main costs in reversing the trends? And I see homelessness is in itself largely tied to big infrastructure problems, right? Structure, infrastructure problems with mental health. And I think, how do I want to approach it? Do I want to approach it on one end by taking the homeless people and bringing them out of that situation temporarily or to whatever extent I can? 
or do I want to work towards shifting the entire system to reduce the likelihood of homelessness? And that's a personal decision, right? And I think that either way you go or other nuances you might you know, go through, each of those require an important intuition into the systems at work and what your personal desire is and how you want to treat it. And so whether it's a nonprofit or a profit, you need to think of it as an engine that you're going to build to solve a problem. And it isn't even the problem on its face. It's how you're going to solve it because there's multiple ways to attack something. So I would say, look at it from the top down and from the bottom up and, and imagine one, what is the actual result you want? And two, what is the most effective way to do so? Uh, basically trying to remove as much emotion from it as possible. Leave the emotion as the motivator, but not the decider. Very cool. Very interesting. Very cool. So, uh, so what's next for UGrow? Oh, UGrow. UGrow is excitingly going to its trial uh, season this next, this fall, hopefully. We wanted to do it by the end of the summer. But this fall, we will be starting our trial with our beta testers. And they will be growing most likely a variant of tomatoes. And they will be growing thousands upon thousands of pounds, each of them growing 100 or, 100 or so pounds of tomatoes in their living rooms. Oh, wow. The, yeah, exactly. And then we're going to take those tomatoes. And for the first trial, we're going to basically try to sell them to a third party buyer, a restaurant. Uh, we have a few people that we've been trying to form relationships with. And then we're going to use that to fund the, uh, the upgrades for the system. Because during that whole trial, people are going to tell me things that don't work. They're gonna, we're going to be iterating the design until we get something nice. And then on the second trial, we're going to be building the software base so that they can actually sell those, uh, that, that produce to each other first and then to a third-party buyer. And then over time, we're going to expand the neighborhoods that each tester is in and develop a network of community-based uh, markets that are you know, supplied by the members of that community first it's but it's going to start with these testers each one of them is going to be a seed and it's going to blossom into their areas um in 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 whatever unique way it has to so it, it like i said it's very much a partnership so the, the next six months are going to be very human centered uh they're going to be a lot of how do we grow this better uh how do we sell this better how do we connect people better how do we turn that into physical code uh or physical design and code so Good, good. Customer centric. Uh, custom, you're, you've already done customer discovery, user discovery, and you guys are just making it happen. So, so yeah, I'm, uh, you already know. You already know. I'm looking forward to getting one of those machines, and I'm I'm ready to drop a check for you, my friend. Uh, what I like about it is a lot of these people don't even like plants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got two plants as my. Uh, that's all I got. I don't even have that's plants. But uh, okay, so as we get close to wrapping up here, how can people contact you? Well, if you go to ugrow.com, uh, there is a sign up for the newsletter. And on the website, you'll also see the blog where you can learn a little bit about, you know, you can see the past newsletters we've sent. So go to ugrow.com and just sign up for the newsletter right then and there on the very front page. And then take a look at the blog there. We're, we're putting out some more articles talking about the economics that we talked about, the automation disruption that, is, that led to the desire for ugrow. And uh, check out the past newsletters so you can see what we've been up to. Very cool. And uh, you're, you guys are quickly, from what I understand, quickly growing a strong community of people who are looking to help you grow, make a difference in the world. So that, right. that's, that's well, awesome. One thing I should clarify, you grow is E-U-G-R-O-W dot yeah. com. E-U-G-R-O-W.com. So is it www dot or is it just flat, straight you grow? E uh, either you grow dot com. You could use the www if you want to. Right. Um, but yeah, you grow.com, E U G R O W.com. E U G R O W.com. I love it. Yeah. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We really enjoyed talking to you. We, we definitely are going to stay in touch. Uh, we want to come back and receive an update later uh, as you guys continue to progress. And uh, that's, uh, that's what I got for you for you today. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, thank you, Walter. There, hang on there for a second. I'm going to close us out here. So for you guys listening or watching, yeah, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth, ugrow.com, E-U-G-R-O-W.com. If you want to do something, if you want to participate as a beta tester, they're looking for, for, for initial beta testing customers uh, to kind of prove out the model and, of course, make updates. Eventually, eventually the goal is that this for-profit for venture is going to help make a difference in the world and help, help, uh, help people help start, uh, solve some of the problems with, uh, with hunger, especially at the local level. 
So we hope you enjoyed today's episode. This segment was recorded today. On, today is August 22nd, 2019. All rights, of course, are reserved under uh, Skyway Bound Enterprises. So thanks again to our guest, Ramon Alonzo with you grow tell give my best to your wife Allison for our listeners if you know of a startup or social entrepreneurial focus please connect us here at Skyway Bound Enterprises we would love to share their story with the world and also we would love to hear your thoughts and concerns or feedback about our show so contact us at social at skywaybound.com or connect us connect with us on Facebook at Skyway Bound Presents this program was well, eventually, we don't have a spot. We actually, we do have a sponsor, but they're not ready to sponsor us yet. But in the future, our sponsor is going to be Mind by PC. It's an IT outsourcing solution for you, the solopreneur and small businesses who need but can't afford on tech services. They provide 24 7 hour solutions that are available to help you so you can focus on what you do best, and that's your business. So, thanks again for listening. Until next time, don't stop pursuing your dreams. Yes, the road in the world of entrepreneurship is long, it's hard, but I promise you, do not quit, do not quit, do not quit. Sky's the limit. I believe in you. You can do it. Peace out. Have a great week.